Hey, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Salhavy. Uh, I've been a model railroader for about 25 years. I've been in custom painting probably for about 11. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, developing as far as decal technology and working with a lot of the various uh, new things on the market to basically make custom work uh, a lot better than uh, than we have. I look at some of the attempts I had about 25 years ago and uh, they're just downright horrible compared to you know what I'm able to do today. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, to teach you uh, a bunch of things today that you can take with you for your own thing. Ron, if you can... Space bar? Yeah. Okay. All right. First reason, well, why do we custom paint? I mean, there are a million project, uh, products available, rather. You know, you put in an order, you wait two years, and you might get what you want, but the <coughs> truth is you may not get what you want. This picture here was taken in New Brunswick in Canada, and this was on vacation. It was a special excursion only to cruise line passengers, but I wanted the engine, and nobody makes NB Southern. You're just not going to find it anywhere. So. The, the key to doing custom work is you have your own memories, you have your own images of places you've been, and you may want to model them on your railroad, which is like what I did here. Okay, the other issue, models take us back in time. And you think about 25 years ago, how different everything looked. And everything now is, with the exception of the uh, Norfolk Southern Heritage Units, Everything pretty much looks the same. CSX Blue, uh, BNSF Puke and Pumpkin, whatever you want to call it. You know, not very interesting. But uh, if you play the video, Ron, it should, let's see. Okay. Okay. So watch the video and see some things that you'll see that are long gone, and then we'll talk about it in a few minutes. <laughs> Are you sure they are at home? Yes. What? No clam strips? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a 10 cm to 54. They did. I got slides of it. Is that a shot of the schedule? What's that? This was just coming and so is that a shot of the schedule? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On patrol for rail fan. <laughs> I was thinking more of the couple having a fight in the 7-Eleven parking lot. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so a couple things about models taking us back in time. Obviously, Howard Johnson's is gone, so there's a, you know, to be, the ability to make freight cars for something that's been long gone. Uh, those were custom decals, which I'm going to go into a little later on. The other thing I wanted just to bring to your attention, I don't know if you saw it during the last scene with the grade crossing with the markings on the road, that was done with a cutting machine or called a plotter. Uh, that's a really valuable modeling tool, and I'm going to get into that a little later, how you can use that, especially for decals and stencils. So, 
And models, let us explore what might have been. Obviously, there never was a Philadelphia Flyers locomotive, but once again, this was my first custom job that I ever did. Uh, you know, custom painting not only the cab and the body, but then being able to create the decals as well. So I'll uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Models tell stories. Anybody can tell us what's wrong with this picture? The spelling for you. It, this was a real boxcar. A friend of mine who since passed uh, started in Hollidaysburg, and around the first days of Conrail, um, they painted this and they asked their supervisor to approve the job, and the supervisor pretty much called them out on it that the car had been painted as Cornell. So once again, another thing that when you think about why do we want to do custom work, well, we, the stories in railroads, lots of stuff, you know, that you can put that story into your own model. It's like the, uh, the refrigerator car that's a solid clog. Clog, right, exactly. So, so getting started, first we're going to talk about airbrushing, and I'm going to tell everybody it's not as bad as you think. Uh, things you see on Model Railroad or all their videos and everything like that, it's more hype than reality. The reality is it's not that bad. I'm going to get into a few things in a second. Okay, first things, external airbrushes, they work fine. You don't need a double action internal mixed airbrush. They're way overpriced, they're difficult to use, and they clog about every seven minutes or so. Uh, this one here, the Badger basic spray gun, $30 at Michael's, probably about 15 with a coupon. These things work fine. It's very simple, as the spray is, is just a spring basically in there, it doesn't jam, you just mix your paint and you spray, 30 bucks, but it works just fine. Okay, the, uh, this one I love, this one was actually from Micromark, uh, very simple to use, the one thing I love about this one is a metal body, because if you know paint by its very nature is a solvent, so eventually you're going to wear down the guts of it. But this one's a metal body. You can leave it in cleaners. You can leave it in anything. It's not going to damage it. Very smooth operating. Uh, micro mark about $45. No, it's the old posh edge. Yeah, it's, yeah. Posh edge. it's very similar to it, yes. But it, it's a great brush. Uh, the other one I like, and my dog actually ate the back of it. Had nothing to do with painting. But no, this one here, it's a Badger 350. It's also... Mm -hmm. A very good brush to use, very simple. Um, the only thing is, as a warning, do not buy the Harbor Freight version of this. It's about six bucks. One of the air hose couplings actually flew off and hit me in the face. Luckily, I was wearing safety glasses. Buy the, you know, forty dollars of Blick, which is right down the road from here. Buy the Badger version of it. Don't get the Harbor Freight version. Okay, can you? Okay, other items to buy. <clears throat> Uh, compressors. Yes, you can use many different compressors. I prefer the actual Badger one myself. Uh, same thing, if you go to Michael's, you register, or even just buy a candy bar, you get the coupon, you get this for half price. Retails about $150, so you're looking at about $75, but it's, the, it's made for um, airbrushing. And you can really use any compressor. The trick is the moisture trap and regulator. This knob here allows you to adjust the pressure. Um, another item I didn't put up on there, but I just want to talk about it, also made by Badger, is the um, paint mixer. You could also buy any bar supply or probably Walmart if you want to buy a drink mixer. It works just fine. Um, this one's a big one here, the 3M vehicle striping tape. You can only get it at like um, auto paint stores, but the thing is, it's so so sticky that you will not get any bleed through. It, it, it's the only tape I found that you really don't have to worry about anything bleeding through. Paint st painting stands, they're sold at Micromark. Uh, little clips on them, you can hold the model. The other thing also, uh, cookbook holders are great for that. Uh, eye droppers for mixing your paint and your thinner according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Um, this is a big one. Your airbrush cleaning brushes. It's the only way you're going to get the paint out of that. Uh, you, you just brush them in there. They're very, uh, very thick. They last forever. These I've had, I could probably say, about 11 years. You can buy them at Micromark. Um, you know, kind of like a Brillo pad on, on, a, on a stick, but works very well. 
Dollar Store Glass Cleaner. The best thing for cleaning your jars, your airbrush parts. You know, it's cheap. You just drop it in there, let it sit there for a couple days. Also, Zep is a really good cleaner for airbrushes. A cheap or old table. Your painting table is going to have a thousand different colors on it. Don't use any of your wife's good end table for, you know, get something cheap, throw it out in the backyard, spray it any color you want. Safety glasses, another big, as I was talking about with the Harbor Freight brush where it popped and broke. You want to have some protection. You got to, I mean, it's only about 30 PSI, but yeah, I did get it, you know, get it pretty bad from that air hose breaking loose. So yeah, you don't want to get that in your eye and have to go to the ER. Painting mask. Uh, when I first started painting, one of uh, my friends who told me, just get I mean, a basic Home Depot paint mask will work, otherwise you'll be blowing green stuff out of your nose for the next three weeks. So, <laughs> for whatever color you're spraying. Exactly, whatever color you're spraying. <laughs> I, actually, I know a guy who ended up with lung cancer. He must have been uh, doing a lot of painting, yeah. He was at the time. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Airbrush classes. I don't work for them. I have no connection to this business, but I can tell you for a fact, the guy that does this is phenomenal. I took about three lessons with him and um, hit the ground running. Uh, he's just that good of a teacher. I mean, you could sit there watching videos and everything about it, but you go and you sit with him for maybe one or two hours. They're very reasonable in price. They're right there in Huntington, and you hit the ground running, and, and you'll just take off from there. So if you want an actual hands-on class, you go call them, and they'll set you up. It's an excellent school. How much did that run? Uh, I think it was like like forty dollars an hour, so it really wasn't that much, and that was only for two or three classes. Okay, so some basics. Uh, first of all, spray a coat of light gray paint as a primer. My favorite one was the CP Rail Gray that Polyscale made. Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore, but the lighter the better. You don't want it to be white, but you don't want it to be too dark gray that it's going to change. This is another big one. And there's plenty of train shows. You can find all the Tyco box cars you want for about $2 a piece. Use a junk model. To, uh, hold on. To test the color and the pressure. Yes. Um, bas basically, are you talking more about solvent paints or acrylics? Acrylic. I'm going to get into that further in a, in a so second. This, more now you're talking about acrylics. Ac certainly acrylics. Yeah, I'm going to get down to that in a few minutes. Okay, so anyway, yes, use the junk model. Don't use your good model to test the pressure and the color. Because you spray it, you can end up with it, you could get a big bunch of dots on it that you have to wipe off and redo. But you just take a junk, I have an old building, just spray it on there, get your color and your pressure right, and then you'll be good to go. You want to paint in a sweeping motion, filling in the color as you go along. The, tr the trick is to fill it in, not just you know, do one of these like a fire extinguisher. You want to fill it in and you'll see it. But the thing is, if you see a shiny spot, that means the paint is wet, it's getting a little saturated. So you basically stop and move to another side. Once the shiny spot disappears, then you can continue working on it. This prevents saturation. Another big one, apply and release the trigger off the model, not on it. You'll end up with a big blob. So if, for example, okay, I'm painting this car. I'm going to push the trigger down here and then paint and then when I'm done release the trigger otherwise you get blobs don't want to get blobs okay uh, wipe up any dribbles with a paper towel the Sun is the best drying medium there is I know people have tried to put it in the oven and melt the model uh, basically a nice day like today a good 70 degree day you leave it out in the not in a shady spot but in like a wide open spot in your yard you let the Sun bake to finish in it makes for a very smooth finish it's gotta watch the dust yeah that's it um, yeah basically do not airbrush enamels on models. It, they just jam up the, the brushes and <coughs> it's ridiculous to clean up. The thing is if you really needed, you know, let's say you're painting brass, the best thing to do would be to go to a Home Depot or an auto parts store, get a gray enamel, spray it with the spray enamel, then airbrush on the acrylic on top of it. Uh, the testers model acrylic is excellent. The Tamiya acrylic uh, is great. It's a very forgiving paint. Um, don't use that true color stuff. Uh, you know, remember these? Yeah, this stuff is, is junk. 
it's not even real paint. It, it's something to the equivalent of, I believe, colored nail polish. <laughs> it's, it peels. I sprayed it, sprayed an engine, was done with it, and literally as I picked it up, chunks of the paint, it was dry, you know, did the sun drying, picked it up, chunks of the paint were sticking to my hand. It's some, some kind of an acetone based something or other. I don't even know what it is. So just yeah, don't use it. <laughs> okay, masking. Once again, the 3M vehicle striping tape. Allow the model to fully dry before masking, and then allow the model to fully dry before removing the tape. And one thing for masking, if you're doing multiple colors with a Tamiya paint, it's very forgiving because let's say you missed a spot or maybe the, the masking was a little low or something was off, you could basically scrape it with a, feet, with a fingernail. And then if you miss something else, you can take a little brush and it will blend in perfectly. You'll never even know the difference. But the one thing to make sure is once, once you've done that, to spray it with dull coat, which you're probably going to do with your decals, but that will seal in the Tamiya paint. It's very forgiving, uh, good choice of colors. Um, and then the other thing you can do, depending on the model, you can use trim film instead of painting. Uh, this engine here was decaled, and that's trim film. That's not a, a yellow stripe on it. So I'll get into the, the plotters in a little bit. But the thing is, the trim film, it, it's easier. And if you can cut the exact size with the plotter, it can actually save you some steps of having to mask and, uh, and repaint. So that's something to consider. Making decals. So. Same thing, the York Durham Railroad in Toronto. Uh, they don't make any rolling stock of their own, but it's a great organization. Uh, I like what they're doing, preserving a lot of Canadian heritage. And uh, I wanted to put one of their cars, so basically using a laser printer, I was able to print the logo and the Ride the York Durham, uh, and also their uh, website, the ydhr.ca, and then the car's reporting marks and uh, road number. So basically laser printers work best. Uh, the one thing to watch out for with a laser printer is that laser toner is thin and loses colors on a dark background. Uh, if, if you look at this again, because the car was a light gray, that the color basically did that. If this car was like Conrail blue or something, it's not going to look right. Uh, there are a few things you can do. Um, inkjet printers will, the color's more vibrant because the pigment actually is thicker. Um, either paint, uh, must, when you make your decals, has to be sprayed with a clear fixative. Neither printer at this point can print white. However, there's a company called Ghost White Toner in Germany. They are making uh, white toner cartridges. Basically what you would do is you would take out the black toner cartridge out of your laser printer and put in the white one and then it will print a white decal. Um, they're available from a company called US Cutter. They ship out of both Memphis and Seattle, so you're not going to get nailed with a huge shipping bill of having to mail it across the Atlantic because it's already in this country. Um, the other thing is white trim film can be used as a backer on your decal, and if you did a laser printer decal like I did with the York Durham car, so if I had put a white, put white trim film on that, it would make it brighter. So that's something that you can also think of. Or another thing is, let's say you had, the, let's say these letters were supposed to be white, okay, the York Durham, the yellow. By putting the white backer on there, those letters become white. So it's, it, it's a workaround for white decals. It uh, doesn't work exactly all the time, but it, it's a good workaround. Decal paper also uh, comes in white, which like the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, you have to either hand cut it or you can use a print and cut function on a plotter, which I'll get to in a minute. So this is the plotter. It's made by a company called Silhouette Cameo. Micromark is selling them. Michaels is selling them. It's a great machine. Um, you can actually cut decals with uh, the white trim film and apply it. I've done that, which I'm going to show an example of. The only downside to remember on these is that the dimensions in the software are not exact. So if I was cutting cutting the Connecticut Central, you know, and I measure this, that's about a quarter of an inch in the software, it may not be the same. So there is some trial and error with that. It is a, a downside to that process. So basically the Howard Johnson's cars that you saw in the video, the one on the left was done with a plotter. I actually took a piece of white trim film and micro scale and cut out the, the letters. 
by putting that in there. And then this one here on the right is the example because the, the graphic was green, but because the background is white, or if that was a white backer, it's a way of, uh, it's kind of a workaround for a white decal. Okay, um, another method is using stencils and white embossing powder. Uh, it does work, somebody actually tested it. Uh, if you cut a stencil, and let's say you're making the letters and you just use the, you would like glue it down and then take a heat gun, it is another way and it will apply to decals. Screen printing, it's what Microscale uses. It is getting into sort of a hobbyist format. Uh, this company, ScreenPrinting.com, also known as RyanNet, excellent company. Their people actually know what they're doing when you call them and they are becoming more hobbyist focused and uh, a lot of videos on their website show you how to do that. So if you wanted to do decals the exact way that Microscale does it, there is a way to do it. You know, it's a little complicated to learn, but they're with you, they'll help you out, they'll get you through what you need to do. Okay, Decal Pro FX. Uh, good and bad about this product. The good news is it does work, the bad news is their instructions are completely wrong. Uh, it's sold through their own website, decalprofx.com, decal or Amazon. It basically works by laminating white film over black toner. So you're going to use their proprietary paper, you're going to print it out in black, and then you're going to go through a process with a laminator, adding white film on that, and then you're going to add mylar on it as a transfer medium. It actually works really well for railroad deluxe gold lettering, so rather than have to sit there with the uh, dry transfers, you know, especially if you got a 20 name, 20 letter name, um, their product will work for that. Uh, one of the best ways to do this is to use Excel and make like an Excel spreadsheet with borders and then place your graphics because the more of a border it has around it, the better the mylar transfer sticks to it. It's just one thing that they recommend and it actually works. Uh, the one thing they won't tell you when you're putting your white uh, film over your black toner, tape it on all four sides because any wrinkle in there, you're going to get a wrinkle in the decal. They don't tell you that. They just say, oh, one side is fine or wrap it over. No, you've got to tape all four sides. Uh, the other thing is when you laminate it and you put, feed it through with the mylar and also the, the, uh, the white film, Put it in on all four sides so it heats evenly. So start one way, rotate it another way. You want to keep the heat as evenly as possible because a lot of things that just don't heat evenly. And uh, so then you separate it in water and you apply it to blank decal paper with a glue that they sell. It's just like a spray mount. It's, you know, no different than like 3M spray mount. Uh, apply it to the decal paper. If you try to model it or apply it to the model, you're going to end up basically, uh, it's going to end up crooked. So it, it's like, you know, trying to, you know, hit something on the wall with your eyes closed, you know. So if you put it on regular decal paper, spray it with a uh, fixed <coughs> clear coat, the white decal will work fine. And a few final things. Uh, the decal paper, both white and uh, clear, is sold by Micromark. Uh, KD also has really good uh, decal paper. Walter sells it. Microscale's finishing, you know, the four little bottles that you see, uh, the, the decal solve and the uh, decal set. That system works fine. Um, one thing Micromark says, you need your own, their own system for it. Not true. Uh, the one you buy in the hobby store works great. Even with custom decals, anything that Decal Pro FX makes, this stuff just works, you know, works great. Uh, testers, gloss coat and dull coat, you don't need to airbrush your fixative onto it. Uh, the other one, uh, Walther Salva set, that also works. Um, sometimes with dull coat and gloss coat, you gotta realize, sometimes you have to spray it multiple times. Um, I had a RDC with the, uh, the zebra stripes on it and the thing cracked right in the middle. It luckily fell on the ground I was able to pick it up, match it together, and just pepper the thing with dull coat, and eventually it held. So things happen. And the other thing is most important, and this I learned from a screen printer, to train yourself to think of the artwork in layers, not as one. Because there may be cases where you will have to apply your artwork in multiple layers. A white layer, a color layer, it's something that uh, you know, you, you have to think about because you're not just going to look at an engine and say, okay, I want to paint that, and a micro scale doesn't have it. Sometimes you may think, 
okay, there's going to be more than one step to, to do this. So you may have to, even the paint, you have to almost think about in layers. You have to start from the largest color and then work your way into the, the striping and so on. Wouldn't maybe sometimes if you have multiple, like multiple yellow stripes with, with a blue body, you might want to paint the thing yellow first and then put the blue on top? Yes, that's one way of doing it. Um, the plotters are also very good for cutting striping. Yeah. If you get the micro scale trim film, you know, if you, if you have a bunch of different stripes you need to paint or whatever, you can use that to make exact cuts because, you know, rather than trying to hand cut everything, you can just use the same, if they're all going to be an inch wide, you can just keep cutting the same, using the same pad, a template to keep cutting that. So, any questions? You are, uh, they, made, they made a product that used to be for airbrush artists, which is a brush on uh, frisket. Right. And the frisket would dry, it's kind of a rubbery substance would dry, you paint around it, and then you could remove the frisket by rubbing it or using an eraser. Yeah, I don't like frisket film. I've tried it. it. It just doesn't stick. It just pops right off. The 3M vehicle striping, yeah. you know, it's expensive, but you know what? That one roll will probably last you a lifetime, and it, it's just so tacky. It's made for putting on a car, basically. And you know the pressure that you're painting a car with is going to be, you know, a lot more than, than a model. Yeah, so it's probably double what a model is going to be. So the best thing is just use the um, use the 3M striping tape. That cutter you were talking about, mm -hmm. talk about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they cost anywhere from about one to two hundred. Uh, you can get them at Michaels. They even make a smaller hobbyist version now. The one that I have there was one of the first ones. Um, the original use for these was for cutting signs. So if you would be cutting sign vinyl. But then now there's a lot more. It's about the size of a small inkjet printer. Works on any computer. It's actually very simple to use. This would probably be the only product I can say that right out of the box it works fine. Because just about every other thing you know is plug and pray as the as the expression goes. But yeah, you just out of the box. Plug and pray. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, this worked right out of the box. So if you got say a micro scale uh, decal micro mark decal sheet. Yes and printed all your artwork on and whatnot, the cutting machine would, how would you go about setting it up so it cuts? Okay, if you machine? wanted to do that, there is a cut and print function in there, and it's in the software itself, where, it, I mean, the thing is, if you were just, let's say, just doing black lettering, then you would just cut it and apply like you would a regular decal. But there is a cut and print function in there where what it does is it, when you print it, it, it prints in two separate steps. It adds what's called registration marks to it. Mm -hmm. And then when you feed that uh, decal sheet into the cutter, it scans the registration <coughs> marks. And the, but there is a function in the software that actually allows that. So if you, wanted, if you were printing on a white sheet like the Philadelphia Flyers logo, you could actually print it with the registration marks, and then it would scan it and print right on top of that. Do you have to use the software for the artwork? Comes right with it. No, the software you do use whatever photo, uh, you know, Photoshop or uh, anything you ha happen to have. You don't need any specific artwork to, uh, you know, to use the, the plotter. Because right, I, I, I just use Microsoft Word to make my Yeah, logos. that works fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could use Microsoft Word if it was just text. And the other thing with the white, with the white uh, printer decal, uh, already called printer cartridge coming out, yeah. you could just do the same thing you were talking about if you were just using text, uh, and you just put whatever lettering down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would just print it in black, and but it would come out in white on the, and you could just apply it like a regular sheet. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to order those from uh, U.S. Cutter or Ghost White in Germany. That three yeah. M striping tape you were talking about. Yes. You said it was very, very sticky. Yes. Does it, does it leave any residue when you peel it off? No. No. Stuff's dead on. It, it's oh, the yeah. best there is. And how about scale coat paints? You, you didn't mention anything about those. Have you ever used them? I've used them. Um, I, the liquid paint works well. The rattle cans, as I call them, they don't. Yeah. I've seen models that were painted with them, and it uh, I mean, it doesn't apply as evenly. It looks it looks kind of choppy. So that yeah. But yes. Oh no, I was oh. going to let you finish with... Yeah, no, I was just saying, yeah, the, uh, the rattle cans, mm, not that great. <coughs> I don't like rattle cans. I still have some of the old local paints. Is there anything necessary? Uh, are they still usable? Floquil is probably dried up. Polyscale lasts a long time. Floquil turns solid because of the, uh, uh, the mix of pigment and base in there. 
Unless so they no solvent to yeah, yeah, the acrylic's salt. very little. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say the salt, yeah, because the salt is for polypro. They turn to yeah. It's toluene and xylene. Yeah, it turns to, it, it's, to rocks. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's not dope. When, yes. When you use that uh, sticky um, striping tape. Yeah. How long do you let the model stay and cure before you do it? That's so sticky. Depends on the day. Uh, if you leave it out on a really hot day, it's probably going to, I would say, an hour. It depends on because of the airbrushing, it's not like an enamel that's going to take forever because you're using acrylics. And if you put it right in the sun, and the sun, is, it's, it's better than any drying oven or heat gun there is. It's just the trick to it. It's just you got to pick a really good day, and you put it right out in the sun. And sometimes, and, and but the other thing is too, you can very gently with your finger, if you touch it, not to leave a fingerprint, but just like touch it, and you feel a little stickiness to it, it probably needs more drying time. But the thing is, a lot of with the acrylics, they dry right away. So you're only looking at about an hour, but you give it a little more, you know, if, if you feel comfortable with it. And uh, then you just peel the tape off and you're ready to go to start your next, uh, you know, it depends on the temperature. If you do it on a cloudy, overcast day, it's probably not going to work. Yes. What, um, if a person I have with the acrylic paste, what's the best, um, um, I'm trying to think of the word, to, to thin it? Thin it water, plain water. You just read the, the uh, use your, uh, your eyedropper. Okay. So what I do, just to, rather than having it sit there and, and mass calculate, you know, what it is, if the mixture says four to one, four shots of paint to four, um, Shots of water, so you take your eyedropper, you know, one, two, three, four, then one shot of uh, water to, to thin the paint with it. You just whatever the manufacturer's recommendations on the jar is. Yeah, the only thing is you use distilled water and not tap water. Right. <laughs> the other thing is with Tamiya, they have their own thinner. Uh, because it is slightly different, they have their own thinner, so basically you use their thinner. It's, I believe their thinner is alcohol. And the other thing is if you thin with alcohol, it dries faster. So, you, you want you want to use alcohol. You want to stay away from the low percentage. You want alcohol has a lot of water in it. Right. So the Tamiya is use, that's their own proprietary thinner. So, probably, then, so what probably, kind of primer would you use? I like just taking Tester's gray paint, the uh, acrylic paint, as a primer, light gray. The best one used to be the Flowquill CP Rail Gray, but they don't make it anymore. But mm -hmm. any, of, especially like in their military color lines, they have all sorts of grays. Kind of like a light to medium gray will will do uh, will be the exact color like, that like you want to use. Natural gray or the light gray you use on colored hoppers. Right, exactly. I would assume dull color, dull 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 paint instead of gloss. Yes, depending on what it is. I mean, the, if it's like a shiny, um, like a shiny model, stainless steel model, then you're going to want to use uh, gloss coat. But probably for about ninety nine percent of the time, you're going to use dull coat. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Yeah. Very okay. good.